David Crampton is 63 and lives in the English Midlands. He and his wife Linda go dancing every Monday. He's done the same job for nearly 30 years and he's a respected member of the community. Though he admits his job has caused him some embarrassment. Someone always has to say when you're out somewhere new, do you know what Dave does for a job? You know, someone always wants to say you're involved in coffins, you're involved in funerals. And you know, the look on someone's face, like, is he measuring me up? You know, they run away. Mr. Crampton's company, Vic Ferns, has been making coffins for more than half a century. The workshop can barely keep up with demand, producing 300 coffins a week. It makes something everyone's going to need, but 12 years ago, the company got a request for a very different kind of coffin, a crazy coffin and a new trend was born. We can have a bit of a laugh at times. Uh, we're very sensitive, of course, that we know not every funeral. But I like to think Vic Fern and Company puts the fun in funerals. I think it's just people who say, look, you know, I want to be different. I've seen traditional funerals. It's not for me. It doesn't say anything about my life. They are symbols of items or hobbies that during life the owners held dear. Maybe about 18 to, to 2 foot above the ground and this can be part of his headstone. Half of these are replicas of coffins that have already been buried and half are owned by people who want to buy now and die later. And we can make any sort of musical instrument, really. It doesn't necessarily have to be a guitar. One man couldn't afford a yacht in life, so he was buried in one instead. And as you can see, it was all lined out in blue satin. And this solid wooden egg was commissioned by a woman from Wales. That she said, I was born in the fetus position, so I want to be buried in that position. Can I have a look inside? You certainly can. There is not a lot of room in there. <laughs> but you can imagine when she's in a fetal position, she will fit in this quite easily. Yeah, you'll be glad to know I won't try and get in. <laughs> very pretty. Pat Cox is a quietly spoken pensioner. She commissioned a biodegradable coffin in the shape of a dance slipper. These are reinforced satin pieces that will actually lower me into the ground. When she was young, her father played the piano for a ballet school. I was allowed to listen and watch the ballet class as long as I sat quietly by the piano and I could see all these pink satin ballet shoes doing their little bore steps all around the room and I thought oh this is so wonderful. While some might call her eccentric, Mrs Cox says she's seen far too many gloomy funerals. Having made plans for her own memorial, now she feels she can get on with life. So you're happy with your coffin? Absolutely. Yes, that doesn't daunt me, the thoughts of lying in there afterwards. It doesn't? No, no, but it would in a, in a box. You know, I think um, an ordinary standard coffin is just so morbid, so scary. George Spencer is the man who made the ballet shoe coffin. It's, it's very nice to do something totally different for a change. He's made coffins for eight years after being laid off as a cabinet maker. He remembers the day he was hired. 
It's just when you make one product, coffins. I got the wife sat in the car, like you know. <laughs> but it took me back a bit at first, but once you get into the job, it's the job like any other job. Somebody needs a chair, you know, or a coffin. We all need one sometime. I call them wooden overcoats. <laughs> Mr. Spencer himself doesn't want a crazy coffin. He's too busy working on his latest commissions. For now, he's putting his heart and soul into a vintage Rolls Royce. The whole of this lid comes off, as we see. The whole of this comes away to reveal the empty, see? And he admits it's a bit of a shame. His work of art will end up two meters under. Thank you.